Welcome to Land of House. I'm Seth. Today I am taking a look at a fun and unique product from Lightime. This is a 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. What's so unique about it is that it is the slim edition. If I turn this to the side, you can see it is only two and a half inches wide. So its dimensions here are two and a half inch by 11 by 21. That means you can easily mount this onto a wall that other traditional sized batteries would not fit. So let's go ahead and unbox this and take a look at all the features and then get this battery on the wall and test it out. This battery was shipped to me from Lightime in a big box. There was no damage in shipping, had plenty of foam and protective waterproofing, and everything seems to have arrived in good condition. The items included in the box are the 12.8 lithium iron phosphate battery, the mounting hardware, which are these little triangular brackets. It has some terminal covers, red and black. It's got the product manual, a little bag of hardware, and then a quick start guide that just folds out with some helpful information. Let's take a tour around this battery, starting with the front case. It is made of metal, which is nice. It has some good information on the front, so you can read that. And uh, there are no handles to hold on to, so you kind of have to just force this thing up a little bit, like this. And let me show you just how thin this battery is. Check that out. Very nice. Easy to mount this to a wall and keep it out of the way. So on the top, you can see it's got some screws if you did have to access the inside, which hopefully you don't ever have to. I turn over here to this end. You've got your positive and negative terminals, and those will use the uh, bolts there to go in and hold the uh, battery cables together. If I spin this around to the back, it's got a little bit more information that you can see there. Mostly it's just cautionary stuff not to uh, damage the battery. Ugh. On this side, also uh, nothing to see. Now on the top and bottom, it has these holes right here, and that's where you're going to be able to attach the mounting hardware to. So we'll get to that here in just a moment. I just noticed there are mounting places here on the side of the battery and also on this side there's one as well. So there's more than just the top and bottom locations that you can mount this to if that uh, is something you need. All the important information you need to know about this battery is listed right here on the very front which is very handy to have. It is a 12.8 volt nominal voltage. It has a 100 amp hour rating. It's also got the charging voltage, which is 14.4 volts, and it has the 1,280 watt hour indicator right here as well. So now that we've seen the battery, let's go ahead and mount this on the wall and see how it performs with my inverter over here. Now the included bag of hardware has some tiny black screws, as you can see right here. Those are going to be used to put these brackets in place. So just use a Phillips head screwdriver and put these into the holes. All right, in typical land to house fashion, I'm installing this by myself, so this install might not be super elegant, but let's see what we get here. Uh, maybe I should try a different approach. I imagine if you're working with somebody else, this would be a much easier install, but I'm gonna get the battery set up against the wall here, and then uh, just mark here, right there, and right there. That should at least get me a place to put a screw in. Now it's time to connect the battery to my inverter. I'm going to connect the black cable first here, making sure there's no washer in between the terminal and the uh, post here. So go ahead and get that installed. Tighten it down with a screwdriver. 
Now, a lot of times the inverter will cause an arc or a spark between the battery and the inverter. So I've got a resistor here. I'm just going to uh, touch these together for a moment and that will slow charge any capacitors that have to be charged. Uh, I'm just going to give it one or two seconds. Should be sufficient. Now if I touch this, we shouldn't see much of a spark. There we go. That's good. If I turn the inverter on, let's see what voltage we have here. It says 13.1 volts. Let's compare that with a multimeter here and see what we get. Let's test between the positive and the negative here. Looks like 13.2 volts between that. So the 13.1 on the display up here is very accurate. Now that we have the battery plugged up, let's see what kind of output we can get from this. I've got a small heater that I like to use for my tests. I'm gonna plug that up here to the inverter and turn this on to the setting number one. That's uh, 570 watts, roughly. You can see with that load turned on, it did drop the voltage to 12.5. So it is uh, working as it should. The slim profile of this battery makes it very easy to mount in a small space as you see here. With the inverter and the battery itself, you're looking at a very small profile. If you were to add, say, a solar charge controller over here, you could have things basically within a two foot by two foot section and you would be good to go with this small solar install. Uh, so, there you go. That is the Lytime 12.8 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate slim edition battery. I was checking out some of the information found in the user manual about this battery, and toward the back you find your connection types. You can do 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt with this battery, depending on how many you put in parallel and in series. And you can do up to 16 batteries of the uh, same identical one here. So if, for instance, if you wanted to have a 48 volt battery, you would link four of these in series to have that. And then you can parallel those to have a bigger and bigger battery. Um, so definitely, if you're gonna get this, check out the user manual and the proper wiring of how that is done. Now there are some parameters on charging and discharging. This has a 100 amp hour discharge and charge limit for the single battery. That changes if you've got more than one. Also, it does have the cold disconnect or uh, cold charging prevention. So if the temperature is gonna drop below freezing, it will stop charging and it won't start charging again until it has reached 41 degrees. So that is a big plus if you are trying to use this kind of battery, say in an RV or camper or outside and you don't want to damage the battery. Well, I hope you found this little video helpful or at least informative. I will have a link to this battery in the description down below if you want to check out more information. I'm Seth with Land House, and I will see you in the next video.